Hey everybody, this is Jenny Israel here with your March energy forecast. So I already pulled a couple of cards to start this conversation. Um, I already kind of had an idea of the energy that was coming in for the month. Um, but the three cards that I pulled definitely validated that um, more than 100%. So my feeling is that March is going to be very much inside of the energy that we think about when we think about March and we think about the beginning of spring and we think about uh, that solstice that brings rebirth uh, for the earth and all of us that live on the earth. And not to mention the fact that we, for those of us who are Christian, we move into the season of Lent uh, as we start to move toward resurrection season and Easter. We also have airy season coming in March um, after Pisces, which that is actually the end of the astrological year. So Pisces is the final zodiac of the 12 houses of our traditional astrological chart. And so it's a bit of a rebirth as far as that's concerned as well, starting a brand new cycle. So from the time that we started to approach March, I did feel that this was going to be an incredibly important resurrection season um, and rebirth season, maybe more so than other ones that have come before. Although we've had a couple powerful ones over the last couple of years. But the fact that we had some major planetary returns and rebirths going on over the last couple of months, Pluto and Venus being two big ones, um, we also had Mars and Venus meeting up at the exact same degree, and there's just a whole lot of union and oneness and rebirth going on. So this particular month is interesting if you look at it from an astrological perspective, because we have no planets in retrograde, which means that they're all active and stimulating. And so that could mean some really powerful movement. It could mean some very rapid movement. It could mean some really unexpected changes and movement. But the bottom line is that we are being put into a situation where we are forging new paths. So when we think about being reborn, I know we use the word rebirth all the time, but I think that the focus of this particular cycle is the fact that we are really moving into the unknown. What does that mean? It means that, I mean, because tomorrow is always unknown. So why is it different right now? Well, it's because our consciousness around this needs to be different. We are at a point of no return when it comes to our vibrational upgrade for humanity. And what this means is that we need to snap into a new perspective or get left behind. So the, there's two choices here. <laughs> you can choose to stay in the old and not move forward into a new way of thinking, a new way of being, a new way of doing. Um, but <clears throat> it is without a doubt that you will end up stuck and stagnant. Now, we must look at God's law here, okay? And the natural law of life itself is that if you are not moving and growing, then you are dying, right? That's what atrophy is. And so we're looking at ourselves from a perspective of you choose to stay put and, and not move, you will atrophy and die, so to speak, right? And for us, that just means we get stuck. There's no movement. Or we choose to drive forward into this new unknown and grow in a new direction that is going to literally plant seeds for the rest of your year. I think this is one of the more important things about March is that it is the energy around this is so important around our focus, our mindset, the seeds that we're planting, because the seeds that we plant this month are going to be what is harvested the rest of the year. And so this doesn't mean that you need to know exactly where you are in life, that you know need to know exactly where you're going or what that looks like. You don't have to know those things. What you do need to do 
is place yourself in a position of trust and faith in works. And faith in works means that you're actually moving inside of your faith. You're not just saying, I believe I'm supported. I know God loves me. You know, I know God's got my back. That's wonderful to have those words and to have those thoughts. But are you actually acting inside of it? Are you moving inside of that mentality? And that is what this energy of March is going to be. It's essentially like, think of yourself as a pioneer. That's, you know, one of the first you know, people to, to drive West in our country with this promise of wealth, abundance, land, gold, you know, whatever that was, but, you know, these pioneers didn't really know what was out there. They just kind of resigned themselves to the fact that they knew it was unknown. They knew it, it was a risk. They knew there would be challenges, but they packed up what they had, what they thought that they would need along with the wisdom of the things that they've learned and they cracked that whip and they went and there were perilous things that they came in contact with that they had never seen before. They had never fought off before. Um, you know, so it, they took the basic needs for, for some survival, some universal tools and the wisdom that they had in their head and their hearts and they went for it. And so this is the movement forward in this month there is this sense of I've got to go, but I'm terrified, right? So we're not driving for, we're not making the choice to drive forward because we aren't scared. We're doing it in spite of the fact that we're scared because we genuinely feel that if we take this leap, no matter how risky or scary it is, that we will be supported in it. And we don't know what that looks like. We don't even, we can't even place expectations around it or what that outcome is because we literally do not know. And we're not supposed to. One of the, the big differences in, I feel, this shift into what we are considering our new astrological year, um, our spring season, uh, this you know season of resurrection and rebirth is that God is doing something new, something brand new something that we cannot anticipate, we cannot imagine. And we can look at this in two ways. We can look at it as, you know, from that primal survival instinct of, I can't see what's coming, therefore I am scared and I need to run in the other direction, right? It's like, I'm going to run back towards the things that I know, even though I know they're not good for me, right? So there's that, or it is, inside of the unknown are unlimited possibilities, unlimited potential, things that you can't possibly imagine for yourself. And what we don't realize when we're trying to control our manifestation and control our plan and control all of the outcomes and understand what's coming tomorrow and what is the rest of our year going to look like? Well, you've created a, a, a box for yourself. You've created limitations inside of that by trying to control it. And so you've already stunted your growth. You've already stunted your ability to bring abundance in. You've already stunted the scope of the direction and possibilities that could come into your life because you've already predetermined that this is what it's going to look like. Right? So yes, going into the unknown is scary. Walking into the dark is scary, but the less you can see mean equals the more possibilities and potential for what's out there. And the less we can see and the less we can control, the bigger the possibilities are, the bigger the manifestation plan. And it's because of the fact that we are still moving, we're still moving forward, even though we have no idea what's coming, what that structure is going to be, we are just allowing it to come in as it's introduced to us. This is faith and work. It means that you know that God has got you and you're just going to keep going. And no matter what crosses your path, you'll figure it out and it's going to be okay. Even though you don't know what that okay really looks like. <clears throat> so the three cards that I pulled and the first, there's two cards from a, um, the chakra healing deck at chakra insight Oracle and one card from the Oracle of seven energies. So the first card I pulled was the throat chakra. Okay. So it, this is the birth canal of our energy system, all right? So the throat chakra is where we bring our expression into existence. 
So anything that we're giving birth to, you know, we always go think like down in that sacral chakra, you know, we think of the literal womb, the literal birth canal, but for our energy perspective, the throat is really the birth canal. This is where we give birth to our ideas, to our creative expression. The throat is the channel of expression. Okay. It's also the channel of, of truth and personal truth, higher truth, God's truth. Okay. So this was the first card to come out. So this is showing us that we absolutely are in an age of expression right now. We are in a month of expression. Now for the majority of March, we are in Pisces season and Pisces is one of the most psychic in the Zodiac, but it is also the most watery and the most emotional. And if we go back and I, I've taught this many times in my lectures and, and talk about it a lot in my videos, that our original gift, our original intuition is our ability to feel. And, you know, we, there are a, a population of us that call ourselves empaths. And, you know, what I'm seeing is that this is becoming more and more an opening of this gift of empathic abilities, the ability to feel is something that a lot of people are experiencing the opening of right now. And so being able to use the emotions as your map forward, your, your navigation, your compass, your intuitive tool to be able to say, I am feeling this in response to this. And what is that about? You know, like, what is this trying to tell me? And understanding that our emotions are a natural tool in God's design to help guide us through our lives and have an experience, a human experience. And so we are being asked to express these emotions, to be able to connect with each other on that level, and to be able to become more intuitive and emotionally intelligent about ourselves. What is it that we desire? What is it that we want? Um, what is going to create a wholeness or a healing within us? And it's not about what's coming from the outside in. It's all about what's from the inside and then the out, the expression, the, the, the external expression of that is just simply a manifestation of what you're processing on the inside. So this really is a time of starting to study ourselves in that way and to see what it is that we are expressing. I'm, you know, I'm talking about March as a very, very powerful, you know, and fertile ground for planting seeds. And that is coming from every thought you think, every feeling you have, every movement you make. And so when you're able to come into alignment with all of those things from moment to moment, the more clarity will come through the expression of that. And like I said, you don't have to have all the details worked out, right? It really is a state of being that you are attempting to birth, a state of being that would then magnetize in all those things that you need, create the, the reality that is going to come from this new uh, belief set that you're putting yourself in, that you are an unlimited being, that you are the one that's restricting yourself. You are the one creating your limitations. And it's all through this need to control everything and protect everything, right? It's like you, you're actually creating, your, making yourself more small and closed in by doing that then allowing yourself to open to the unexpected, open to the unknown, allowing the body to take on its original design, which I'm going to move to the second card now, which is the heart, right? So when you have the throat and the heart together, you have the expression of the heart, right? And so this new evolution of humanity is coming from here. And if you go back to my previous video on 2022, and I talk about the sixth vibration of, of the year, which is all around love and the heart and the expression and the projection of our intuition through our heart. The heart is the biggest brain when we look at our frequency fields in the body. It is the most powerful field that we have in us and around us. The heart field is what is collecting data all the time. And our bodies are actually designed to do this. Our bodies are designed to collect data, bring it in, analyze, distribute, and then act on what is good 
and release what is not good for us. But somewhere along the line, we decided that we were going to resist that natural design and shut everything down. So we don't stop taking in. <laughs> no matter how much, how many walls you put up, no matter what you do, your natural design is to collect data from your environment. So once you've collected that, if you've walled yourself off, then all you're doing is creating an echo chamber for all of the data that's getting collected. Your body is designed to filter that out and let things go. I mean, think about our organs, our physical body is designed to take in and push out what needs to be eliminated, right? We do it through our breath. We do it through our blood. We do it through our digestive system. So you, you're supposed to be doing this on an energy level as well. Just because you feel another person's feelings doesn't mean that you need to hold them in your body. You know, that this is part of the faulty teaching, I think, some old teaching, old empathic teaching, but we're not going to get into that now. <laughs> it's about opening the heart to allow it to move through, right? And chakras go from front to back. So we're talking about throwing that open on the front and on the back and allowing the breath of God to work with your natural design to take in from your environment and release and eliminate what you do not need. Okay. And that healthy connection of heart and throat allows for this constant movement of energy, constant receiving of data and constant expression out into the universe of what is good and the release of what is not working for you, right? Eliminating what you don't need and bringing in more of what you do. And we can't complete this process if we're shutting ourselves down and we shut ourselves down in the attempt to control, okay? So the third card that I pulled is beyond the ordinary. And I love this because of the fact that it has this feeling of unlimited potential. Look at where that central star is in his chest, right in the center of his heart, right? And we have this explosion, this nebula happening kind of at the base of his brain, which is right in between the third eye and the throat. And this is the mouth of God. This is our USB port where we receive our divine data, where we are connected to God's design and connected to natural law. And the more we resist that and try to control it, manipulate it, or push against it, the more congested we become. And so this card of beyond the ordinary is the extraordinary, right? It is the extra sensory. It is the metaphysical. It is the paranormal. It is the beyond. And this is what we're going to start reaching into more and more in order to expand ourselves. And it's because we've reached a point, like I said, of no return. And the other is just no longer good enough for us. Expansion is the only way forward. And we're going to do this with a deeper, deeper sense of our connection with our higher power and that, and a deeper understanding that this isn't just about us in our little human form, you know, that we, we are not controlling natural law. <laughs> natural law exists in spite of us. And the idea is you're not manipulating natural law. You are not controlling natural law. You're either working with it or you're working against it. Working against it creates resistance. Resistance creates struggle and struggle creates suffering, right? If we get on board, yes, there could be pain along the way because growth and pain are two natural partners of one another. It's like pushing a child through a birth canal. That is not an easy thing to do and it hurts. But the miracle that takes place at the end of that short period of pain is what the miracle of life is all about. And there is an amnesia a natural amnesia that comes in that allows us to continue to do this again and again, push ourselves, rebirth ourselves. And yes, does it get 
tiring sometimes? Do we get weary? Absolutely. But this is where our relationship with God and our higher power becomes of the utmost importance. Because when we do get tired and we do become weary, we place ourselves in the hands of that higher power and ask to be carried, ask to rest, ask for that time, because it's not just about us. If we were meant to do this all by ourselves, then none of this would exist. So we are meant to do it at, in, inside of this parental support. And yes, are, do we become the parent in that process? Absolutely. But the trust of that higher power gets translated into a trust inside of ourselves that we are allowing ourselves to be guided through this directly, you know, this divine conduit and connection impulses through our emotions, our intuition, understanding that there is a connection there, a guidance from our higher power through our natural and divine design. And when we follow that and we trust those signals coming from within, then we are healing that old trauma of not being able to trust, of feeling alone and feeling abandoned. That slowly will be pushed aside and be replaced by a greater strength in our trust and faith in that higher power and ourselves functioning inside of it. And when you think about trust from that perspective, think about that, how it would affect your relationships. We replace God with the people in our lives. We place expectations on them to fulfill us, to be our trust. When in fact, they're just another human who is fallible, who makes mistakes, who will and can break promises and will and can betray and not because they want to hurt you, but because they're a human being and because we make mistakes. That level of trust can be broken again and again, right? But the trust in self and the trust in God is eternal. And so you can be in a relationship with someone that you quote unquote, don't necessarily trust or you're repairing trust there because you trust God. And you trust the impulses that you're getting through that relationship that says, if you show up in any space and time with an open heart and as your best self and producing fruit inside of the, the, the living word of, of God and, your, and the higher power, which is love, compassion, forgiveness, if we are functioning inside of that and trusting God that we know that that's the path forward no matter what our outside circumstances are, then we can trust that our relationships are going to give us exactly what we need. And those people that you're in those relationships with are off the hook from you putting expectations on them that are beyond their ability to fulfill because they're not God. And so this push forward into the unknown, to beyond ordinary circumstances, which means you're not going to be able to use your history to give you a map forward into what's coming because it's something brand new. That's why I said God is doing something completely new. And so if we try to use our history to create a structure to move forward, we're not going to be able to benefit from the new structure that's coming in because we're gonna create limitations on it because we're gonna use old ideas and old mentalities to try to have a new experience. And so it's like putting on a black and white filter and trying to watch HD color. You just can't do it or you're not gonna have the same experience. So it is a little disconcerting to feel completely disarmed but you do have the wisdom of your design. You have your emotions and the emotional intelligence that comes with it. You have your gut feelings. You have your heart leading you, right? And we know the difference because the mental, that old, the ego, the, the trauma response, the, those old voices, those are voices of fear and they lie. They lie to you. They tell you, you can't do this. You aren't that person. You aren't good enough. 
right? Or it'll project it onto someone else in your life or something else in your life. You can't have that. You can't, you're not worthy for that person or that person's, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas the other speaks in positive language and it speaks in love. And sometimes that will pull you into a situation where there is pain and discomfort. So the path of love doesn't mean that it is a path that is always without challenge or without, because without that, we can't grow, right? So the, the loving way forward, there is going to be risks. There are going to be challenges. There are going to be growing pains, but this is what life is about because this is how we feel fulfilled. We feel whole. We have fully full sensory experiences. And then this is what allows us to then share with others. So March is going to be super interesting. You know, week to week, we're going to check back in and, and, and see what we're experiencing and, and how we are, you know, staying present in the moment. Um, the minute that you have those questions that start to come in of, you know, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what to do. I'm so confused, the doubts, the fears. The only thing that you need to know is what's happening right now, because it's the only moment that you need to get through is right now. When that next hour comes, you'll deal with it then. When tomorrow comes, you'll deal with it then. Right now is the only moment that you need to worry about. So you bring yourself back in, you place both hands over your heart, you take a deep breath, you breathe down into your body and you start asking yourself some really important questions. What do I need right now? What am I feeling right now? The, the, the solution will be in that moment for you. And this is why we don't need to worry because we're only in the moment that we're in. And we're going to work through the entire month like this, one moment at a time. And we're going to keep moving inside of faith and work. So I am wishing you all a very bount bountiful and introspective month of March. Um, to end my video, I want to read an excerpt. I didn't just pull cards uh, for this month. I actually pulled um, my Journey Through the Heart book and just opened to a page. Um, I happened to open to July 11th, which I thought was fun that I got an 11 day um, when I opened it up. <clears throat> But the, this particular um, devotional is called Clear the Path to Your Heart, which I, I had already pulled these cards. And then when I opened the book, I said, of course. So clear the path to your heart. I watched Old Faithful from my window. The geyser gurgled and spewed a low layer of steam. Then true to its name, Old Faithful erupted and sprayed thousands of gallons of steaming water into the air right on time. A full range of gurgling emotions, reactions, and responses to life line the pathway to the heart. We need to feel them all, anger, hurt, sadness, irritations, in order to feel joy. To experience life in all its wonders, we must embrace all of these feelings. We need to experience the little angers as well as the big hurts, the painful wounds that life sometimes brings. To insist that we will only feel pleasant emotions means we're blocking the pathway to the heart. We're ignoring all the other gurgling emotions that need to be felt. Our emotions are important. All need to be recognized. The energy of each needs to be acknowledged and released. This clears the way for love. All the emotions that precede love clear the heart so it's pure and free to feel joy. Trust your emotions, all of them. You're not off the path. They lead to the path that you are seeking. They are the journey to the heart. Let them flow freely and sure as old faithful. Your heart will come gleaming and shining through. So when we think about that analogy of the old faithful, of the geyser, right? That bubbling, that gurgling that happens down here between the heart and the solar plexus, where our humanness meets our divinity, where we are constantly incubating and sending signals out into the universe and receiving data back. It's like, as that is here, if it's going to release, it goes up right? Through the throat chakra, through that expression channel. So both must be moving and both must be clear 
in order to have the full experience of the vibration of the receiving and the releasing. So I just, I couldn't believe how appropriate it was. I'm, I'm always in awe and wonder of how all of these messages line up um, and never, never seeks to, um, you know, or, or I don't know, I'm just always in awe and wonder of it. So um, one of the things that I didn't mention about the cards was that the, the numbers are, we have 29, which adds up to 11 um, for the throat. We had July 11th on this um, particular excerpt that I pulled. We have beyond the ordinary, which is 45, which adds up to nine. Um, and then I got a, a 22, um, the master number of relationship duality and the relationship of the physical and the spiritual in our lives and creating balance between those things. And as we know, we are in a triple two year. Um, so I love the fact that I pulled the heart first of all, and that its number is 22, how appropriate um, for this particular reading. So lots of numerology playing in here as well. And I'm actually recording um, this video in the energy of the new moon as well in Pisces. So rebirth and new beginnings, um, manifestation for the future. We're just doing it in a little bit of a different way now and definitely more in a powerful way because we are accessing that manifestation through God instead of trying to do it inside of our humanness. And so we can only go as far as our flesh limitations allow us in our manifestation if we're trying to control the process. If we are tapping in to the universal flow of God and natural law, then we have unlimited potential to create. So on that note, I leave you and hope that you have a beautiful month and check back here for uh, some weekly check-ins. Come join me on my Instagram page um, where I will be back and visible again uh, a few times during the month to see how things are going. Thanks again.